128th contact. Friday, February 15, 1980, 4.48 am. Billy says this time, you have really let yourself wait a not very long time, my child. Semyaza says I assured you, nevertheless, that I would already visit you again in a rather short time. Billy says I meant that, yes. But may I ask you some questions right away? Semyaza says sure. You've probably dealt with the numeric values. Billy says exactly, and at the same time, I've encountered some things that somehow cannot be right. Semyaza says that I already imagined. It was, indeed, inevitable, that you had to find the source of error. Billy says you know about it. Semyaza says but of course, my friend. But I wanted you to recognize for yourself how illogical your question was regarding the numeric values, when you asked for the values of the letters of the Latin alphabet. Billy says then it is really true that the numbers specified by you exclusively apply directly to the German alphabet and that fundamentally different values apply to each individual language. Semyaza says sure. Billy says good, because I found that out myself but I just wasn't sure. Semyaza says you can now be sure of that. For my part, I found it right to let you recognize this fact yourself because you thought illogically and, consequently, also directed a very illogical question to me. For this reason, I also did not deal with your explanations in greater detail. But if you now agree, then I will gladly mention the numeric values for the German language to you, because you basically wanted to get to know these from me in our last conversation. Billy says that's right, girl, but I have endeavored myself around this and, at the same time, have also found out that the method of calculating various things with these numeric values cannot be calculated uniformly. So for example, for the destroyer number, 666, there arises a calculation procedure that runs completely counter to the calculation formulas, as they were stated by me in our last contact. I also found that there is only a numeric value difference from the Latin alphabet's numeric value of about one-fifth, which is, nevertheless, of tremendous significance. If you don't mind, I would like to lay these things before you, for which I have brought along six handwritten sheets of paper. I have worked for not less than four days and four nights, in order to find these results. Now, I would be curious to see to what extent my calculations are correct. Semyaza says you are not alone in that because curiosity also drives me to know what you have calculated. Please give me your results. Billy says happy to do so. Here, you see, I've let the following be written down here by Beetle numeric values for the German language by that, I mean, of course, the Kabbalistic numeric values for the German language, where the values are valid exclusively for the vocabulary of this language, in connection with words of foreign languages, which have become pure German-speaking word terms and values. In this list and calculation, the following values arouse in my calculations for the individual letters. A equals 2. B equals 9. C equals 1. D equals 5. E equals 5. F equals 8. G equals 9. H equals 1. I equals 1. J equals 1. K equals 9. L equals 5. M equals 4. N equals 5. O equals 7. P equals 6. Q equals 8. R equals 2. S equals 3. T equals 1. U equals 6. V equals 6. W equals 6. X equals 6. Y equals 1. Z equals 5. From these numeric values for the individual letters of the German language it was found that different words and terms of this language yield and have received, contrary to their actual, original terms, completely new values, and that because the human being has worked cult symbolic unvalues into them. Now, the question for this to what extent are my present calculations correct? Semyaza says you said that for this, you had only calculated for four days? Billy says four days and four nights, 
because even at night, this problem occupied me inexorably. Semyaza says despite your unusually extensive knowledge of many things and despite your very great knowledge capacity, yet another time, you draw up my admiration and astonishment. Billy says why is that, if I may ask? Semyaza says you still ask me that. Billy says of course, because I truly don't understand your admiration and your astonishment. Semyaza says really only you can ask that without understanding and genuinely surprised. Billy says I actually don't understand you. Semyaza says you don't need to explain that because I recognize very well that you truly lack the understanding of my words. It is your modesty that doesn't let you understand my explanation, which is why I want to explain the facts to you in other words just think about the fact that you spent four days and four nights thinking about calculations. Only four days and four nights. Nevertheless, in this incomprehensibly short time to me, you have done a work, for which a human being of earth normally needed several decades. Even if I would have to accomplish the same achievement with our computer apparatuses, I would still need several days for that, at least five to six days of strenuous work. And there, in your modesty, you cannot understand that yet another time, my admiration and my astonishment break through. Billy says you making a fuss, as if I have suddenly become something very special. You seem to have gone a bit crazy all of a sudden, my child. You apparently forget that I received all of the values of the Latin alphabet from you, which served as the basis of calculation for me. Semyaza says I forget that in no way, but you could not know that these values have only partial validity for the German language. Furthermore, the numeric value differences existing between the German language and the Latin alphabet cannot be found simply through primitive mathematical calculations but solely through calculation forms that are still unknown to the human beings of Earth up to now and that even you do not know. Billy says you are just a little bit mistaken in that, my child. Semyaza says with that, you surely don't want to say that the cosmic calculation forms are known to you? Billy says yes, my child. You really should have already realized that long ago, because already several times I've presented you results that I calculated by means of mathematical forms other than those of Earth. Only, I can very well make all sorts of calculations with these cosmic calculation forms and can thereby find the right results, but afterwards, I can then no longer remember, even with the best intention, how I actually calculated them. Semyaza says that is understandable to me. On the one hand, this apparent forgetfulness indicates that you actually use cosmic calculation forms, because this apparent forgetfulness represents the typical symptom of these calculation forms. But on the other hand, I don't understand who of us could have been so careless to instruct you in the use of these calculation forms. The rule is this that each human life form is supposed to be informed about the fact that these cosmic calculation forms exist, but the human being may not be instructed in these because he must achieve these forms solely through his own evolution. This is because he otherwise tends to selfishly make profit through these calculation and mathematical forms. You are, indeed, so modest and anti-materialistic that it is already to your detriment on the earth, but this doesn't mean that you are immune to materialism up to the absolute. We clarified this clearly, before we took up contact with you in the month of January, 1975. In the time since then, however, we weren't able to determine that you have further developed yourself so far in this connection that you would have made yourself mighty in the cosmic mathematical forms. Thus, someone must have carelessly instructed you in these. Billy says you expect nothing at all of me. Semyaza says do you actually want to say that you have learned everything yourself? Billy says you really have a damn glorious opinion of me. Do you think that I just always sit and twiddle my thumbs? 
Semyaza says I spoke not a word of that, and I also would never say something like that, for I know too well that in relation to learning all the possible things, you always move on the outermost edge of what is possible. But still, I don't understand that you claim to have learned these mathematical forms yourself, because so far, we were never able to register anything like that. But on the other hand, if it would be as you say, then this would mean that since the year 1975, you would have had to have made an evolutionary leap of approximately 400 years, because from your evolutionary state known to us, which you exhibited six years ago, the cognition surrounding the recognition and use of the cosmic mathematical and calculation forms first follows around 400 years later. I know very well that since then, you have learned very much, but that, that would surpass our wildest notions. Billy says you speak like a fairy tale princess. It's really not much at all. All of you have been ever so kind to me and have usually given me any information that I wanted. From that, I could really take out tremendously much and could further investigate, further calculate, and further develop myself. So I then just also encountered the fact that it somehow couldn't be too difficult to confront the cosmic mathematical forms. So I just tried it, until I then managed to achieve a result once. That was about two years ago, and since then, I've been trying to get myself involved in this matter more and more. Semyaza says that is incomprehensible to me. We weren't able to register such a development in you. Billy says incomprehensible. Just think once about the fact that it was you of all who taught me how to block myself against countless things, so that even you can no longer penetrate into me and get any information out of me. Semyaza says ah. Of course, now I understand. I didn't think of that at all. Then I now understand that your words correspond to the truth. Billy says oh no. Then did you really think that I was lying to you? Semyaza says forgive me, but I really didn't think that. I also wouldn't have been able to understand it, if you would have told me an untruth. There was, however, a fear in me about the fact that you could have been influenced by some forces, which would have let you say something other than that which was your will. Billy says then you've just worried for nothing. But I thank you for your concern because I am happy about it. You prove to me with this that you haven't become indifferent towards me through the bad past time. Semyaza says that's very sweet of you, but tell me have you used the cosmic storage block, in order to find your way into the cosmic calculation and mathematical forms? Billy says why do you think that? I still remember very well how I have been urged to withdraw data from there always only if it would be impossible for me to calculate the necessary results or data myself. So far, I have always held myself to that and will also continue to do so. I've never had and will never have a reason to make use of the storage block and rightfully or otherwise unlawfully. There's just one thing with this that I don't understand entirely the cosmic calculation and mathematical forms have become familiar to me but they don't remain in my memory even with the best efforts. They simply disappear again after use, and all the formulas fall into oblivion. With these processes, however, more and more familiarities arise for me, which appear to me in such a way as if the entire system of formulas in my thoughts and calculations would be steered in each case directly by the cosmic storage block, just as if this would be accountable and responsible for all these formulas. Can you explain to me what this is all about? Semyaza says it isn't necessary for me to still give an explanation about this because you have already recognized the facts yourself. What I would like to say to all this, however, is that I am so very delighted about the fact that you have made such progress which wasn't recognized by us that it pushes me to cry in joy. Billy says just let it be, girl. You would bring me into the devil's kitchen. It's just important that you now finally understand. Semyaza says yes, that is a word of truth. I am so very happy about it. Do you still want to explain your further calculations to me? Billy says gladly if you have enough time. 
Semyaza says I am so very pleased that I'll simply take the time. I can adjust it later by a shift again. Billy says as you wish. So, for the effective numbers, during their calculations I came across the base value of 1, out of which the value 37 has arisen, which through multiplication forms a three-digit value in a triple sequence, so thus an effective number which consists of three equal numeric values in a strung together sequence. So the following resulted. 37x3 equals 111 equals 3 equals 3. 37x6 equals 222 equals 6 equals 6. 37x9 equals 333 equals 9 equals 9. 37x12 equals 444 equals 12 equals 3. 37x15 equals 555 equals 15 equals 6. 37x18 equals 666 equals 18 equals 9. 37x21 equals 777 equals 21 equals 3. 37x24 equals 888 equals 24 equals 6. 37x27 equals 999 equals 27 equals 9. The numeric values of the effect odd numbers also become laid out as separate assessments, but only in their added base number, so thus in the values of the effect 3 odd numbers 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. The effect odd numbers themselves are 37x1 equals 1 equals 37 equals 1. 37x2 equals 2 equals 74 equals 2. 37x4 equals 4 equals 148 equals 4. 37x5 equals 5 equals 185 equals 5. 37x7 equals 7 equals 259 equals 7. 37x8 equals 8 equals 296 equals 8. 37x10 equals 1 equals 370 equals 1. 37x11 equals 2 equals 407 equals 2. 37x13 equals 4 equals 481 equals 4. 37x14 equals 5 equals 518 equals 5. 37x16 equals 7 equals 592 equals 7. 37x17 equals 8 equals 629 equals 8. 37x19 equals 1 equals 703 equals 1. 37x20 equals 2 equals 740 equals 2. 37x22 equals 4 equals 814 equals 4. 37x23 equals 5 equals 851 equals 5. 37x25 equals 7 equals 925 equals 7. 37x26 equals 8 equals 962 equals 8. 37x28 equals 1 equals 1036 equals 1. 37x29 equals 2 equals 1073 equals 2. 36x30 equals 3 equals 1110 equals 3. Then I have here the effective numeric values of those over the 3 value number 27 as well as the odd ones below the 3 value number 27. 1 in these calculation cases, the resulting addition numbers must be calculated back and reduced to the base number. 2 with the resulting remaining numbers, which in every single calculation case can always only be the value 1 or 2, the following rule applies. A 1 equals with the remaining number of 1, it must be rounded down to the next lower 3 value number. If a valid 3 value number is reached through the base number calculation, then this number counts as a basis number. Then, as a further calculation basis, one is to proceed from this basis number as a base value number. B2 equals with the remaining number of 2, it must be rounded up to the next higher 3 value number. If a valid 3 value number is reached through the base number calculation, then this number counts as a basis number. Then, as a further calculation basis, one is to proceed from this basis number as a base value number. 3 with resulting base number values below the value number of 3, the result is multiplied by the number 7, from which then again the base value number is calculated, with the possibly necessary rounding up or rounding down by the possibly resulting remaining value of 1 or 2.
Now the question for this here in my calculations, have any errors crept in yet, and if so, where are they? Semyaza says your calculation remarks correspond to the correctness so much that a comment on them is unnecessary. This is truly more than just astonishing. Let's hear your further remarks. Billy says with pleasure. Human child, how glad I am that so far, everything is right. Then I will now come to the effective numeric values. The effective numeric values in their origination. The effective numbers are calculated by the connecting and multiplication number 37 arising out of the number 1, where for these calculations, solely the number 37 applies as a multiplication number for the final calculated triple base value number. For example, equals base number calculated with the value 9 equals 37x9 equals 330. 33. The triple addition numbers in the triple value from 3 to 27 are valid as base numbers of basis for the effective number calculation and, hence, as source and end base numbers in the block of the effective number calculation. Thus, these are the basis numbers. 3. 6. 9. 12. 15. 18. 21. 24. 27. The numeric values lying between these three value numbers as well as the ones lying over these three value numbers are converted as I have explained. Thus, I already come to the effective number of degeneracy, of death in degeneracy, of elimination and destruction to the number 666. The effective number of this form and this value can always only be calculated in the sequence of a threefold union value of three connecting creating words or terms, each with the addition base number of 18 for each word or each term in a simple base number calculation without remaining values and in the first computation power. The three words or terms, in the self-addition value, as I already explained, each have to yield the base addition number 18, where they also have to exhibit an absolute connecting value as for example Craig War Todd Death Maud Murder the self-addition number of these three terms in their self-addition amounts in each case to the numeric value 18, but where the base number value of the term Craig is calculated differently than with the words Todd, and, Maud, on which I will come to speak, but a little later. The calculation for the base number calculation, for this example, is as follows. Creek 92159-99-18 Torda 1755-18 Mott 4725-18 The terms Creek, Torda and Mott have a direct sense of alliance or even a direct connection to each other, because Craig War, as is well known, is marked by many Todden deaths and by Maud murder. Therefore, in this connection, as a result of each individual word value, the threefold addition base number assessment is given as a starting point for the effective number calculation. The words connected with one another in their meanings create on the one hand, a belonging together connection, but at the same time each also exhibits the base number 18, which, added from all three words, results in the number 54, which divided by 3 in turn led to the result 18. And exactly this number 18 is now of importance, namely as an end result of the entire calculation. After this final base number calculation, the continuation and, therefore, the effective number calculation arises with the multiplication number 37, which is now being brought in. So the calculation, then, is 37x18, 6, 6, 6, 18. From this, it follows that the circle closes itself if the effective number is added again and the starting value 18 arises as an end base number again. Now I come to the effective number calculation in another form, with the denominator 18 as an addition value number, with word beginnings and word endings. In this form of base number calculations of addition, the first letter and the last letter of a word or term have to result in the base number value 18. This number then counts as a basis point for the effective number calculation. In this form, the first letter and the last letter of a word or term can each only exhibit the numeric value 9, which adds up to the number 18, 
So the starting number for the calculation of the effective number 37x18 equals 666 equals 18. Examples of words and terms with assessments of the first and last letters. Krieg, war. 99, 18. Krank, ill. 99, 18. Betgang, going to Bre. 99, 18. Busgang, going to do penance. 99, 18. Betgang, going with the request to God. 99, 18. Bank, bank, nine nine, eighteen. Kreuzgang, going to the cross, nine nine, eighteen. Kreuzzug, crusade, nine nine, eighteen. Gerichtsbank, dock, nine nine, eighteen. Gifttrank, poison drink, nine nine, eighteen. Gebetsbank, pew, nine nine, eighteen. Gottes Krieg, God War, 99, 18. Glaubenskrieg, Religious War, 99, 18. Kirchenkrieg, Church War, 99, 18. Gangsterkrieg, Gangster War, 99, 18. Kirchgang, Going to Church, 99, 18. Kriegszug, Going to War, 99, 18. Gebetsgang, going to Bray, 99, 18. And so on and so forth. So these are some words and terms with the beginning and end numbers of 9, which together add up to 18 in each case and which also have corresponding connection values among themselves or with other words and values of the same character, so for example with words and assessments, etc. as they are listed following this and which, in each case, in the primary calculation, also result in the base number 18 as an addition value and which also have a direct sense of connection among themselves and are thereby joined in a threefold form to the absolutely degenerate, delusive, destructive, exterminating, and deadly value. Christus, Christ, Ehren, Honor, Gott, God, Israel, Jesus, Mord, Murder, Papst, Pope, Recher, Avenger, Tode, Death, Zion, and so on and so forth, Christus, 1121316318, 18, Ehren, 51255, 18, Gott, 9711, 18, Israel, 132255, 18. Jesus, 15363, 18. Zion, 5175, 18. Mord, 4725, 18. Papst, 62631, 18. Recher, 225152, 18. Tode, 1755, 18. So, with that I am finished for the time being with my explanations about my calculations. It would now be interesting to know whether these are also correct now or whether there are errors now in these. Semiaza says also for this, it is superfluous to add a comment. Everything is error free. I just need to think about this once, about everything. You have, indeed concealed all sorts of things from us about all that you have learned in the last few years. Only now is it slowly becoming clear to me all of that which you have grasped and processed since our acquaintance. This, however, also gives me the assurance that you will not bring your knowledge to use unrightfully and that also the last tiny forms of that which ever could have endangered you regarding materialistic whims, have been eliminated in you. I'm just sorry that I could not follow the career of your development because your continuous blockade hasn't allowed this and has concealed this, which is also the reason why we noticed nothing of this. Billy says you doing too much of the good. Please let it be now. I would prefer if I could ask you something else if you still have enough time. Semiaza says sure, just ask. Billy says okay. I've let the things go through my head again regarding those traveling to America, 
namely with regard to the two full replacements who should be induced by one going away. I think that you have primarily placed this condition regarding replacements because you thought of our financial situation, right? Semiaza says that's right. Billy says good, this I imagined, as I just explained. Therefore, couldn't the matter be managed somewhat differently, if the financial aspect could be regulated differently? Semiaza says why? Billy says because it causes very great difficulties for those moving away, if they each have to find two full replacements. That isn't so easy. Semiaza says do you have a proposal to make, then? Billy says I have, namely the following if those moving away continue to pay their contributions for the time of absence or pay these in advance, couldn't it be avoided, then, that they would have to look for new members? Semiaza says your proposal is worthy of reflection. Billy says I thought so, too. Don't you think that you can say, yes, to it? Semiaza says the condition was worked out by us together, but we haven't taken the possibility mentioned by you into consideration because we hadn't thought of such at all. Billy says but it would probably only be fair if you could take it into account and endorse it. Semiaza says I think that your proposal is very good and that, for my part, I can endorse it. Therefore, act in such a way as you have worked out your idea. I will exert myself for it and will regulate everything. Billy says is that final? Semiaza says that is my decision, which you can accept as given without concern. Billy says thanks girl. You are, indeed, a golden angel. But how does it stand now with the group members specified by you, who should go to the USA? Isn't there still the possibility that they can remain here? Semiaza says about that, I have thoroughly talked about your insistence once again with Father and Quetzal, and we also consulted the recordings of the registry device of the most recent times. We have thereby come to the same decisions as before. It is advised that Jehan moves to you all in the center, because the necessary conditions are given in him that he integrates himself very quickly into the group. With Elsie, however, we see no other solution than the one already mentioned. Also with Madeline and Benedette, the facts look the same, although with Benedette in recent times, some things find themselves in a determining change, making a departure, perhaps, even unnecessary. But this will prove itself up to the middle of this year, because until then we still want to pursue her career of development, in order to make a final decision only then. Billy says aha, but anyhow, this makes it difficult with Madeline and Hans, because as far as I know, the two want to get engaged on the 25th of March of this year, in order then to marry in the foreseeable future. Semiaza says that cannot change our decision for her, nor, however, the one for Jehan. He is to strive to find integration and residence in the center, while Madeline necessarily must go away for about two years, in which case we only see America as a suitable solution. Her entire manner is inconsistent, which is why she must first learn to attain a determining and purposeful consistency, and it is hardly given that she will learn this in the center because she finds too much protection there. She has to learn to be self-initiating. It may well be that Jehan and Madeline want to enter a marriage, but this would inevitably be doomed to failure, if she does not change her entire manner up to her final alliance with Jehan. I cannot and don't want to explain more in addition to that, because with these words, I only answered your question. We will not, however, interfere in your private and group issues anymore. And if I hereby gave you information once again, then it was only because these matters are still connected with our condition regarding those traveling to America. Billy says that is clear to me. But so, purely in confidence, can I still talk with you about such things, if they don't appear in the contact reports? Semiaza says sure, but I must set the condition to this that these and other similar matters should only be purely informative for you and that you let nothing of it be made known in the group. 
This applies to the same extent as for those matters about all incidents surrounding the group members, about which we will also always inform you furthermore. Billy says that is all right with me only concerning Bernadette and Madeline, I would still have another question, which should be answered in the report for them, because it is of importance for them. If you can, therefore, still deal with it. Semyaza says I can do that only if you want me to explain just the facts or give advice. Billy says good, that should be so how does it stand, then, with Madeline, what does she fundamentally have to change if she is to stay here? Semyaza says with her, it's her entire manner of her psyche, which she is not trying to bring to a healthy state. On the other hand, her effort around the teaching of the spirit stands far in the background which she likewise has to fix very quickly, if a stay in the center is to be made possible for her. Billy says that is clear information, but how do the things stand with Bernadette? Semyaza says about that, I already explained to you that she is on a good path to bringing about the necessary changes in herself. This, however, rests in a serious outside influence, which will first bring her in the direction of reflection in a purposeful form. Billy says then it must already be a rather severe influence. Can you tell me a little more about it? Semyaza says only under the condition that I will transmit this contact report to you only then, when the influence is already created, or that I will transmit it to you with your promise that you won't make it accessible to the group members until after the events. Also, you must not talk about these things beforehand. Billy says I promise you that I will not say a word about it. Semyaza says good, then I will give you some explanations we already talked several times about the reasons as to why we issued the condition that Bernadette should go to the USA. In this context also Engelbert appears, which is why you have occasionally spoken with the two of them, as you told me. It. Billy says but these things are now clear, settled, and concluded. Semyaza says unfortunately not. You have let yourself be deceived by the sham, because you were burdened too much with many other problems. Therefore, you overlooked the fact that everything went on and still no final conclusion has been found. As you know by my earlier explanations relating to this, these events are marked by an incorrect action which, despite your efforts, has found no final conclusion up to now, because you have only been listened to superficially. This conclusion will first be coming on the 25th of February of this year, when the events that have already become unstoppable, brought about by the two with great might, will have arrived. This will also be the aforementioned outside influence for Bernadette to carry out the necessary change in herself, with which we hope that it will be true and good. Billy says you torturing me. What the devil will it be, then? Semyaza says you cannot change the things in the upcoming events, because it is already inexorably certain that the unjust doing of the two is so embedded in their thoughts that bad consequences will result from it. Billy says damn it, then tell me, finally, what will result. Semyaza says it will happen at 5.57am on the 25th of February that Engelbert and his wife Maria will have an accident with their vehicle, due to which Engelbert will be suffering from then on. The injuries will be able to be remedied, but it will make him stricken for the rest of his life. His wife will only have minor injuries, but she will have increased pains in her head in the future. Billy says damn, then one must do something yet, so that all this cannot become true. Semyaza says unfortunately, that has already become impossible, because it is also already certain, without a possibility of change, that on the Sunday morning of the 24th of February, the last action for these events will be initiated, released by the will and determination of the two. Billy says by Engelbert and Maria, Semyaza says you are an illogical. I speak, of course, of Bernadette and Engelbert. Billy says but I can still change and prevent everything if I speak with the two in detail once again and explain everything to them. Semyaza says you must not do that under any circumstances, 
because if the events explained to you don't arrive in such a way as I have just told you, then very much worse consequences will appear. You must be clear to yourself about the fact that the already determined events which have become unstoppable would then be delayed by a few days, by what means the overall determination forces would be deepened. This would then mean that very much worse consequences would arise from it. Billy says and what would this mean, then? Samyaza says the expiration of two human lives. Billy says are you sure of that? Samyaza says absolutely. Billy says shit, damn it. So they would drive their heads against a brick wall, so to speak. Samyaza says yes, because the delaying of these events through your intervention would actually aggravate everything because certain thought processes of Engelbert would work themselves into such a mess that while driving his vehicle, he would suddenly steer along uncontrollably at high speed. Billy says then I should just keep my mouth shut about everything? Do you think, damn it again, that this will be easy? Samyaza says it will certainly be very difficult for you, like also repeatedly before. But you will consider the two lives and will accordingly, act correctly. Billy says shit. But what if I now intervene by force and just outright forbid Engelbert from driving the car? I could simply keep him out of harm's way for a week or demolish his vehicle in such a way that he cannot drive it? Samyaza says that wouldn't change the things in any way but would only delay them. Billy says but there must be a solution, nevertheless. Samyaza says I told you the only one that there is. Billy says then is it actually the case once again that I am just as completely powerless as you yourself? Samyaza says sure, unfortunately, that is so. But so, as the things look and are to be expected, we can be content. Billy says somehow concern resonates in your words. Samyaza says you must. Indeed, notice everything? Yes, that is so. With such injuries, complications can often appear. Billy says even that too. But tell me, when may I make an effort for a betterment? Samyaza says indeed it isn't expected that complications will appear, but these must be anticipated. You can become effective, at the earliest, after the third day of the events. Billy says probably because of the increase of the pains and their abatement after the high point. I understand. But why, actually, must this really become true? I mean, excuse my confusion, what is the triggering factor of all the events? Samyaza says the reason for this lies in pangs of conscience, which are, in part, done consciously, but operate at their greatest strength in the unconscious. Billy says oh, I see, and how long will it take until Engelbert will be reasonably in working order again? Samyaza says a period of about eight days. Billy says and Maria? Samyaza says you don't need to worry about her. Billy says then I am reassured. Good, but now I would like to address you once again to my questions which I asked you during our telepathic conversation three days ago. Were you able to devote yourself to these matters and make the necessary clarifications? Samyaza says sure, but about that, I only want to give you that information which could be clarified by me unambiguously and undoubtedly or about which a very great probability exists. That which is to be the mentioned concerning this, however, has rather unpleasant traits. But I want to begin with this in accordance with your inexact information, I had to make some effort to locate Lillo and her family. I needed several hours for this, but then after that, very unpleasant things arouse with the clarification. It became apparent from this that the real initiative for Lillo and her husband to depart to America basically came from the core group member Verena. Verena's doing. Billy says she is called, Vreni. Samyaza says well, Vreni's doing relating to this lies in the fact that she feels anxiety in herself for this journey, which is why she found it good that other people besides her children and her husband Beach should join in this journey, which is why she turned to Lilo and her husband. 
Billy says but why hasn't she informed me about that? Semyaza says because she determined, at least unconsciously, that you would advise her against such an action, as you have explained this to Elsie, as you told me. But now, I was also able to clarify with absolute certainty, on what grounds Lilo's husband has truly decided to go along with Beat, Vreni and their children. This is because he thinks in secret that Vreni and Beat would vouch for him and his family with their financial means in every respect, upon which he has already completely set himself. But this means for the two group members that they stand in terms of losing all of their possessions if Vreni doesn't let herself be instructed and doesn't give up her plans in relation to taking along Lilo and her family or getting them to join later. Billy says but Elsie has said, nevertheless, that the man is honestly interested in our entire cause. How, then, could he only be out for profit? Semiaza says you ask a very illogical question, because as you have explained to me, you already gave Elsie an answer relating to this, which I can only confirm. This man's words and actions like this, that he now occupies himself intensively with your writings and is honestly interested in everything represent a purely well thought out and profit calculating machination of his, without any honest interest in your and our matters. Therein also lies the reason why he has never sought you up to now. In this regard, there is the fear in him that in the case of a confrontation with him, you would recognize what his plans, thoughts and reasons truly are. Billy says something similar I've nearly imagined. I just wonder if I should talk with Vreni about it. She has, indeed, hidden from me what she has in mind and, thus, also dupes the entire group, which corresponds to a dishonesty. So perhaps it is better if I keep quiet about these things and try to open her eyes by means of other facts. Semiaza says your idea is good, and you should carry it out in such a way. In my opinion, However, Vreni will not engage herself in it because she truly suffers from false feelings of duty and also often doesn't want to recognize her own mistakes made. So it will be that she will refuse to accept your advice. This, however, can have as a consequence that she will actually lose all of her possessions, if those things that are in high degrees of probability do not occur. My clarification work has yielded that due to carelessness on the part of Lilo's family, a person not well-minded toward her husband has informed the American federal representation about the emigration plans, which, as you know, in the planned form correspond to a law violation. From this, the great possibility arises that upon entry into America, at the border or at customs, they will be taken into custody by the responsible authorities and be immediately brought back to their homeland. But the same thing, so it has resulted from my clarifications, can with great probability also happen to beat Vreni and their children, because their plans have, with great certainty, also been betrayed to the American federal representation by the same denunciatory person who is malevolently set on Lilo's husband. Unfortunately, this isn't to be changed anymore. Billy says but at the same time, I don't understand Vreni. Just why does she act like this? Semiaza says I already mentioned a part of her wrong reasoning to you. On the other hand, however, the rest lies in her nature, that she wants to exercise a leading role in her entire life, so that even her husband only has a shadow or role to perform alongside her. As a result of her influence, the rather dumb thought has also arisen in the two, that the building up of your center isn't handled properly, about which we are all of a completely different opinion, however, which I want to make clear to you. From their misconceptions relating to this, however, results the further thought, that they will create a new center abroad but will build this up much better than you and the entire group. These ideas of the two are so unreal. However, that in connection with their secret and incorrect action and about taking along the additional family, no permission for them to create a new center may be given from your side. This is for several reasons, but in the particular case because of the unhealthy leading role mania and the impropriety, which are very strongly expressed in Vreni. From all this, it would, 
in fact, also be revealed in the course of time, what already extremely fine ambitions exist, such that they would remove themselves from your group and would break off all bridges to it. Billy says that is, indeed, news. Semiaza says which I, unfortunately, cannot spare you. Billy says do you still have other things in stock? Semiaza says sure, a few things are still unspoken, if you want to hear. Billy says since we're already at it. Semiaza says I have found out that Lilo's husband not only harbors untrue thoughts and deceives his fellow human beings by this fact, but that he also spreads these lies. Through these, he creates a considerable impression with his fellow human beings and also unwarranted trust which he then shamelessly exploits as in this case where due to untrue assertions made to Vreni and Beat, he surreptitiously has their confidence, which Vreni's improper decision certainly confirmed. But this case doesn't only go into action with these two, because also Elsie will be influenced by it, due to a meeting of the two to which you absolutely must address her once if you want to set her apart from these things and spare her harm. Billy says that is, indeed, cheerful. Then also Elsie joins here in the same dance. I know the cuckoo, this hard work against the whole group and me just does not stop. To me it seems as crazy as the matter with HG, of which I have also told you, who gave me the message that he was to greet me from you for he was supposed to have come in contact with you. Semiaza says you know that this cannot correspond to the truth, for neither I nor anyone else of our people would ever take up any conscious contacts for the human beings of earth in the terrestrial space, neither now nor in the future. On the earth there exists only a single conscious contact for a human being of earth, namely the physical one with you, while in Germany, three impulse contacts exist with with human beings who have no knowledge whatsoever about these contacts and whose names you also know. It will also remain so, which means that these contacts will not be renewed even if the contact persons should die. Under all circumstances, if an imminent need should necessitate that one day in the terrestrial space, a contact with another human being of Earth would be decided upon, then this could exclusively only be the case with a core group member of your group, who would also have to have his permanent residence in the center, however, after you, this could only be one person, who will already live in the center soon, namely, after the passing away of this group member, for the next generation, only would come into question, and after the passing away of this group member, who won't be born until after the year 2130, however. But you may not mention these names. Billy says well, I will hold myself to that. But how does it stand now in all other countries of the earth, do any contacts from you Pleiadians even exist there with human beings of earth? who likewise know nothing of the fact that you have impulse contacts with them. Semiaza says sure, but you know that, and in the meantime, these have increased to 24,638. But none of these contacts are received or made in such a way that the terrestrial contact persons would know about these existing contacts. All of them are now purely impulse telepathic, so thus, none of these human beings of Earth know anything about them. Moreover, these are all human beings of the Earth who cooperate in the overall development of the terrestrial sciences within a large framework, and none of these contact persons stand under the occupational designation of a doctor's title or engineer's title. Billy says does that mean, then, that the Pleiadians would never enter into contact with a human being of Earth anymore, such that the contact person would know this? Semiaza says certainly, my words mean exactly that. You are the only one since the year 1942 and will also always remain the only one since then. If in the distant future, an imminent need doesn't arise such that someone from your expanded group is appointed for such a contact, but at the same time, only those whom I mentioned to you could then be taken into consideration. Billy says that is now clear and precise. But now, I would like to ask something again on account of Lilo's husband does he possess any material consciousness based abilities, 
which he might utilize towards his fellow human beings or simply for himself? Semyaza says in this connection, you can be reassured, because I have, of course, meticulously analyzed everything in this regard as a top priority. He doesn't have the slightest usable abilities, on the contrary, his entire being is so materialistically shaped that he absolutely doubts the existence of such abilities with a human being and considers these to be fantasies, which is why he also doesn't have the best opinion of you, but at the same time, the paradox appears in him that he is afraid of you and knows exactly that you would expose his fabric of lies if he came before your eyes. Billy says you speak of this man in a tone as if you would be furious with him. Semyaza says you notice absolutely everything. Yes, I harbor not exactly friendly and loving thoughts in me towards him. Billy says but why is that, because that is truly not your style? Semyaza says that is a very accurate and precise word from you, but nevertheless, I wouldn't like to talk about it. Billy says I think that you should clear me up though. Semyaza says it isn't in my mind to do that, however. Billy says that is unfair. Semyaza says it may be, because I know your discretion. Billy says so. Semyaza says no, I only want to explain to you that he has told lies that give me a very hard time. Billy says what kind of lies? Semyaza says I don't want to give any information about that. Billy says you already start that again. Semyaza says and it remains there. Billy says then can I at least know to whom he has told these lies, such that you hold such bad thoughts for him. Semyaza says that I could explain to you. Billy says then fire away. Semyaza says well these are his wife Lilo, Vreni, Elsie and Beat, whom he has forced by his lies to wrong views behaviors and decisions. Billy says and? Semyaza says that is probably enough. Billy says but then, there must still be other reasons behind the fact that you speak of him so poorly. Semyaza says certainly, but I won't let myself speak about that. Billy says can you tell me, however, whether these things with him are connected with outside influences? Semyaza says such influences exist in no way, that is clearly established. This is all his own product, without any doubt, and everything arrests in his sense of pursuing profit in material degeneracy. Billy says I asked about that because certainly Elsie or Vreni will excuse the man with the notion that he has been influenced from the outside by negative forces or groups. Semyaza says that is not the case, as I just explained to you. In all other respects, I must point out to you that Vreni, with her dishonest plan, is approaching a serious statute violation, which must necessarily lead to her exclusion from your group, of which you should be clear. Her plan, which she has concealed from you and all group members, until she could definitively get everything underway, that is, to take along several persons not belonging to the core group to America, in order to let these help and cooperate in a new building up of a center of your community, offends against the statutes of your group so much that an exclusion of all those consciously participating necessarily must occur when this attempt at a breach of statute hasn't found its end before it can thrive so far that the planned action grows beyond the idea. Billy says by that, do you mean that an exclusion already has to occur when the planned journey is begun? Semyaza says sure, that is the meaning of my words. In addition, it is still to be noted that also Elsie has made herself guilty in this matter of a serious breach of trust against you and the group as well as against the statutes, but in her favor, only in the sense of complicity and wrong confidence, to which she was basically forced. If this wouldn't be the case in this form then she would have to be immediately excluded now. Billy says damn it again, even that still. I hadn't even thought of that at the moment but you write in the statutes, it expressly states that only existing core group members may build up a branch center of the free community of interests abroad or elsewhere, and such ones must also return to the home center after the establishment. 
Semyaza says sure, so it is. Billy says but, Elsie, if she now goes to America, can still try hard over there to build up a new center, right? Semyaza says that he's entitled to her and is also expected, yes. Because of the breach of trust of Vreni, however, and because of her imperious nature, which has clearly and plainly become evident by my investigations and analyses, it may not be that she works together with Elsie in this connection. Her whole impropriety and her trust fragile silence don't allow this, because it clearly follows from this, not least from her imperiousness which probably won't let itself be corrected in this life, that she is not suited for this work. The danger of continuous relapses would be too great. Billy says then this probably means that Vreni and Beat will remove themselves from the group. Semyaza says I already spoke of the fact that this possibility already exists in an unconscious form, when I explained the concerns regarding the bridges to be broken off. Billy says ah, now I understand better. There is probably nothing more to be done. Semyaza says probably not unless they would remain with their family in the homeland and would seek a new residence for themselves somewhere. This would also be the best for them and their family, because here, they could honestly develop themselves further through you and in collaboration with you all. Billy says but now, if Elsie can build up a new center in the States, then Beat and Vreni could still become members there later on, if they are determined to begin anew. Semyaza says you forget the statutes which state that a group member excluded from the core group as a result of betrayal may not be received again as such. This regulation has validity for every country of the earth. Billy says I actually didn't consider that. But, if the two want to stay here now, I mean here in Switzerland, then they could stay here nevertheless, right? Semyaza says sure, I did already say that, but this will not lie in the domineering nature of Vreni, so therefore, there are no big hopes in this regard. Her nature hardly allows her to admit such gross errors and to change already adopted decisions. Billy says then just not. I will talk with her, but through other facts. More, however, I will not do. I can already well imagine that this conversation will not be of joy for me, and I can already see how very aggressive she will be on my speech acting on her in an unfriendly manner. Semyaza says that probably isn't to be changed, but you must do it. Billy says unfortunately. Anyway, girl, I thank you that you, despite what once was, have told me these things. You did explain to me that you would no longer talk about such matters, but as you see, it was just necessary nevertheless. Semyaza says I haven't acted against my words, because you have, indeed, expressly asked me for such information and explanations and for the respective clarifications and analyses. What I explained for that was only the facts of the existing statutes and the resulting consequences for the fallible ones. There was, however, also some advice about this, which you also asked me to give, however. Billy says that's right. I'm apparently not exactly 100% on the ball today because it all goes to my kidneys. Semyaza says that is, indeed, very well understood, but now we should end this subject. Billy says I also prefer that. I would also still have something else to ask, rather than just to discuss such tiresome things. Semyaza says just ask. Billy says well, I would gladly like to know if you also write fairy tales at home for the children, as is so common on the earth. Semyaza says sure, but these fairy tales, in the sense of content and development, differ entirely from those that the human beings of earth offer to their children. Moreover, they are also intended for the adults. Our fairy tales contain only very few unrealities but rather very many more actual facts that should be instructive for all human beings. Billy says ah, I find that good. You know, I've also recently gone among the fairy tale writers. Semyaza says you have. Billy says of course. Semyaza says will you give me this fairy tale to read? It must surely be wonderful, 
because I know your thoughts and feelings, and I also very happily read fairy tales and can then dream about them. Billy says oh, that's nice. Of course you can have it, but there are ten fairy tales, so not just one. Here, I've brought them for you. Samyaza says you are very dear. I thank you very much. Billy says not worth mentioning, my golden child. Only, I would then gladly like to know from you, how you like them. Samyaza says sure, I will tell you that, but may I also give them to my sister player and to Manara, as well as to father, Quetzal, and some others. Billy says ha, you're making me grin. You seem to be tremendously delighted. Of course, you can submit them to all your people or even publicize them in the entire universe. Samyaza says and if I partly take you at your word? Billy says who? Samyaza says I mean my words just as I have said them to you. Billy says you crazy, what do the Pleiadians have to do with my fairy tales, eh? Samyaza says read, my friend, read. Billy says but you still really crazy, my child. You can't really mean that seriously, right? Samyaza says yes, because I think, as I know you and your style of writing, that these fairy tales will be good, nice, and of great value. Billy says so even with you all, there are still crazy people, other loonies and wackos. Samyaza says, I don't understand you. Billy says I mean that you are crazy, loony and, moreover, a wacko. Samyaza says because of my idea. Billy says certainly. Samyaza says I will read the fairy tales, in order for me to decide then. But if I find them to be valuable and good, I may then pass them on. Billy says sure, but make no advertisement with them. Samyaza says I will still have to decide about that myself. Billy says so you are, indeed, crazy. But we had better stop with that. As usual, I am to convey to you dear greetings from everyone and thank you for everyone for your last greetings. Samyaza says that makes me happy please extend my love to everyone. Billy says will do. But tell me, are Patar, Quetzal, Player, Manara, and all the others actually doing well? Also, is Isidose actually still on the earth? I would gladly like to speak with this twit again. Somehow I am just sorry that I was so unfriendly to him at that time. Samyaza says they let you be greeted, which I was to convey to you already three days ago. Yes, they all fare very well. Isidose isn't here anymore, however because he only came here for a short time. He has thoroughly changed his opinion about you and the human beings of Earth in the meantime. Therefore, you also don't have to be concerned that he would be offended, quite the contrary he is delighted about the fact that you have opened his eyes for him. Billy says then I am reassured. Samyaza says I am also very happy about that because he was previously always a little strange, which has been resolved since then, however, since he once came to you. But now, my friend, I must end our conversation for today and bring you back into your workroom. If you have no more urgent questions. Billy says no, not at the moment. Samyaza says good, then I'll go now. Till we meet again. Billy says when are you coming back? Samyaza says with certainty, in the course of the first three days after Engelbert's return from the hospital. Billy says good, then it cannot last long and it would already have to be between the 3rd and 6th of March, right? Samyaza says sure, but now farewell, my dear friend. Go now, please. Billy says bye, girl, bye, and rather dear thanks for everything. The End <laughs>